The start of the 2020 Tour de France in Nice was one surrounded in speculation and uncertainty. So we're all set and ready to go for stage one of this year's Tour de France. We arrived here in Nice on Tuesday evening and everyone went and underwent another coronavirus test in preparation for the race. The year of 2020 itself has been a hectic one. Marred by the growing coronavirus pandemic, the question of whether or not the tour would go forward this year started already in March. Once the race was rescheduled for later in the year, it was clear that the tour would go forward. But what would it look like? Actually, at the moment, yeah, it doesn't look good uh, with the corona infections here uh, around Nice and in some other areas in, uh, in France. Um, but at the moment, we are just here within our own bubble. Yeah, just like it is, and as riders, we are just happy to, to be back racing and uh, we make the most out of it. I think you can expect some surprises for sure. Uh, definitely not a stereotypical first week of the Tour de France. And I think with the build-up that people have and haven't had, I think we'll, we uh, will see uh, some fireworks in this first week. I think it makes for a very, um, you know, it makes for a, an exciting race, really. People will be a bit more resourceful and we'll just see how everybody's coped with it. And I think it'll open the race up and make it very dynamic. The Jumbo Visma team looked to be the strongest coming out of the Criterium de Dauphiné. However, the Ineos Grenadiers have won the Tour de France for the last five years running. Well, the feeling is a bit strange, I think. You know, uh, I've been used to some nice starts, uh, especially the one in Yorkshire and last year in Brussels. And now it's a bit strange because not so many people, no fans, no support, uh, quite actually. Uh, also on the road, you don't see much of flags of the tour welcoming us, so strange feeling. I'm super happy that we actually can ride it. The thing that probably stands out, the two things that stand out for me is the first six days, uh, how, how tricky they are and how tough they are for a tour. Uh, because we go directly onto climbs and technical climbs straight away. And then the other thing that stands out is the back end of the race, stages 15 to 18. It's a very tough alpine finish to the race. So stage one in the tour from Nice to Nice. Uh, not an easy stage, especially because it's the first one uh, of, uh, of the tour. A few climbs in, but at the end also 30 kilometers flat with the headwind. So uh, let's see what happens. Uh, maybe it can be the first bunch of the tour, maybe not, but anyway, we're going to try to make the best out of it and put Sam in a good position to win. If something else happens due to the weather, we will see, but it can be already a very hectic first stage in the tour. I expect it will be a sprint, but uh, you never know the race. Uh, maybe some teams put some pressure and it can be difficult, but uh, yeah, my goal today is to win and take the L, so uh, I hope to be there. After months of no rain, the sudden downpour caused the roads to resemble an ice rink. There were too many crashes to count, and eventually the riders decided to neutralize the peloton until the final kilometers. The race commissaire announced the general classification times would be taken at 3 kilometers to go. Even so, there was a large crash at the 3 kilometer banner, and a lot of riders were taken out. Yeah, we didn't expect it to be raining really all day. I think we uh, felt like we had wet roads all day. And, um, you know, I don't think it's rained here in a long time and the road was super slippery. So I think uh, I saw a lot of riders go down and um, it was nice to see actually the, the riders neutralize the descent themselves and, and try to make it safer for all of us. And uh, I think that was the right decision. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a tricky one today. Out of the reduced peloton, Alexander Kristoff powered through to victory, taking the yellow jersey with it. Alex! This is the face of the champion! Unfortunately, two riders from Lado Sudal, Philip Gilbert and John Dagenkolb, were unable to continue to stage two. Um, there was a big impact uh, on the right knee. 
um, uh, actually on both knees, but uh, on the right um, a lot more. Um, that was also where the the pain was coming from, and uh, yeah, I was uh, in a really a lot of pain to to finish uh, the stage or try to finish. Uh, eventually, I ended up uh, being out of the time time limit, uh, but of course, deeply disappointed to. Uh, leave the tour like this especially on the first day there's there's nothing else uh, you can do sometimes you win sometimes you lose and uh, today was uh, definitely not a good day for team lotus sudal a technical finishing circuit would define the second day of racing in nice it's all a good race yesterday i think uh, we came out of it well you know today's another day and it's a big one we have to treat today a bit like a one-day race. There's a lot on the line, yellow jersey, KOM jersey. It's pretty rare to have such big mountain stages uh, so early in the race, so it's kind of an unknown variable. I have no idea how today's gonna play out. Tactically, it's a hard one to put a finger on. Uh, you know, normally guys like Philippe could take the jersey today, but he had a couple of crashes yesterday, so no one really knows how he is. French favorite Julien Alaphilippe took the win as well as the yellow jersey. This was an especially emotional win for Julien Alaphilippe after the unexpected passing of his father earlier this summer. The other strong ride of the day was by Mark Hershey, the 22-year-old Team Sunweb rider. I was quite disappointed off the finish, but uh, in general, it was a super good day for me. And uh, I think I will always remember him. Yeah, stage two and already uh, up there, you know, fighting for a win. So uh, yeah, in the sprint, I was never gonna, never gonna win against these two, but uh, in the end, like I said, third place and uh, stage two is pretty good. For stage three, the peloton finally made its way out of Nice and on to Cisteron for another sprint finish won by Caleb Ewan of Lotto Sudal with a reduced team of only six riders. Stage four started in the breathtaking town of Cisteron and made its way onto the mountains for the first mountaintop finish of the race. Uh, it's the first really uphill finish. We go to a climb of 10 kilometers up, especially the last seven are very hard. We are in yellow. Uh, we're going to defend the yellow. If it is for the stage, we don't know, but uh, it's not going to be an easy day today. Here we go, stage four. We are here in front of uh, the happy finish line, quite fast for the final climb. We are here, such a fast, fast bike, fast climb, so we are ready to do our best. Although there was speculation following his crash and withdrawal from the Criterium de Dauphiné, Primus Roglic was able to take the stage victory with the help of an incredibly impressive team. much to say I just thanks for to each and every one of you uh, is uh, it's just nice I think nice start uh, so uh, hopefully uh, we can drink some more uh, especially at the end huh? so <laughs> EF education first has had a quiet tour so far but they are far from out of the race Headed into stage five, the team wears yellow helmets to signify their lead in the team classification. Yeah, it's uh, I call it warm, I call it warm, but it's pretty cool. You know, Team GC, it's something special on the tour. We get these cool orange, yellow helmets. We kind of look like that, uh, you know, that old school zebra bubblegum sticks that they used to have. <laughs> After a very peculiar stage five in which no breakaway formed, the sprinters got another chance at the top step. Sunweb may have had the best lead out on the day, but it was Wout van Aert who took the win. Sam Bennett took second, and with it, the green jersey. 
The biggest upset of the day was only realized after the finish, with the announcement that Julian Alaphilippe would be penalized 20 seconds for taking a bottle in the final kilometers of the race. Julian Marcel was very disappointed, of course, uh, because at the end he did nothing wrong. We didn't gain anything sportive-wise uh, by drinking two times of a bottle. But I must say, yeah, we made a mistake and nothing to do about it. It's still two and a half weeks of tour. Um, we will get back in a good way and we will try to win, to win the stage again. Yeah, it's a big surprise. Um, not really the way I wanted to go into the yellow, but um, I mean, we'll take, we'll take it. Um, we'll wear it with, with pride tomorrow, and uh, we'll take it day by day. Cheers with everyone, and uh, thanks a lot. Stage six at the Tour de France. Good morning. Good morning. What do you have normally for breakfast at Tour de France? Uh, it's pretty simple. I like porridge, actually, in the morning. Uh, not so much pasta. This is maybe after the race. So porridge with crunchy and fruit. And then I like something salt, like omelette, bread. That's the base. So we're here at the start of stage six of today's Tour de France. Um, stage that's relatively flat in the first part and then finishes with a, a long first category climb. There's a small descent and then the uh, 8k road up to the finish. So for us today we're going to look to, uh, to go in the breakaway and see if we can uh, get an opportunity to win the stage from the break. The stage was indeed won from a strong break that formed early in the race. At the base of the final climb, the national champion of Kazakhstan, Alexei Lutsenko, stole away from his breakaway companions and soloed to victory. The GC riders, knowing that they have many battles coming up, were content to roll to the line, all but Julian Alaphilippe, who tried to recover a few seconds in the final 100 meters. Nice result for you there, Balko, with the sprint. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just wanted to stay actually in front to to not uh, yeah, lose any seconds uh, with gaps and um, yeah then I saw Alaphilippe go yeah he went very fast but uh, yeah I had to still had to pass a few guys from Ineos to go after him and uh, yeah, I think maybe he took just one second or two seconds on, on our group but uh, yeah I mean it's nice to, to finish uh, finish second of the bunch there but uh, yeah I think this, this kind of climbs uh, suit me well. Hello guys, I just want to explain you my morning routine every day. I just awake, I do a little bit of yoga. Yeah, it helps me a little bit for stretch my back. And after that, I make a brew, of course, a Colombian brew. In that moment, I take the opportunity for talk with the people in the house. And also, I just put the stickers on the panini thing, you know, you can see there. And yeah, that is my morning routine. Stage seven was racing from kilometer zero. Bora Hansgrohe, in an attempt to retake the green jersey for Peter Sagan from Dakota Quickstep Stan Bennett, set a pace up the first climb that caused large gaps in the peloton. Over the next few climbs, the peloton continued to split with many of the pure sprinters left behind. When the race was just starting to calm down, the crosswind shook it up once more. A lot of GC riders missed the memo and were caught out. Yumbo Visma was once again one of the strongest teams on the day and kept their two leaders safe in the front group, along with FDJ and the defending champion Egon Bernal. The stage was won yet again by Yumbo Visma's Wout Van Aert from a very reduced peloton. Adam Yates kept his yellow jersey, but the green jersey is back on the shoulders of Peter Sagan. Stay tuned for another recap next week and make sure to check out all of our Tour de France content at cyclingtips.com.
24. Thanks, everybody. It's a great birthday. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want it any other way.